What's up, guys, and welcome to another episode of the Yard Podcast. I'm your host, Randy. And I'm your host, Konu. And we are back here and ready to go for episode number nine. Really quickly, we just wanted to say thank you to everyone who's been rating and reviewing the podcast as well as leaving us or as well as following along and subscribing. We really appreciate it. Um, Keep leaving those reviews. Keep rating. Keep giving us any type of feedback. It's how we stay in the charts, move up, and how more people can find us. And now that baseball is back, we want to get this podcast podcast out to as many people as possible. So to keep up with all of our Dodger-related news, you can find us at Dodger Yard on Twitter and Instagram, dodgeryard.com. Facebook is Dodger Yard 2019, and then you can find our YouTube channel just at Dodger Yard, and you can find my personal at Twitter and Instagram at Randy underscore Radcliffe. And you can find my Twitter and Instagram at Michael Coney. So we're ready to get into this episode. First things first, uh, last week we did not have an episode because as soon as we finished recording our episode, basically me trashing Man Pre- Manfred for a solid 30 minutes, uh, we, got that new, we got that new news out that baseball was close to an agreement from John Heyman, all just the kind of wacky stuff that's been going on through all of this. So our episode was kind of irrelevant. So we scrapped it thinking we would be able to record a day or two later with all brand new info that did not end up happening uh luckily last night we got some great news that baseball's finally returning which was just in time for this podcast so we didn't really miss anything the last week not given an episode same stuff as always but we're ready for this one episode number nine Minus the draft yeah oh yeah the draft <laughs> oh that was last episode wasn't it oh man yeah i totally forgot about that that was my bad whoops that was totally my fault then my bad we should have at least put that up my fault. Um, we'll have plenty to talk about them, though, because I'm sure Well, we might get to see maybe some of them practicing out with the big league team in spring training since there will be mo- no minor league. So maybe we could talk about them then. Uh, but yeah, baseball's back. Uh, I kind of woke up this morning almost in a shock because it just what are we in the almost the end of June? Everything got canceled on March 12th. I think it was where you are three months later we finally have an answer that baseball has returned and it's like it took a long long time it did and the I mean the frustrations were high from every single end of things uh fans were pissed off players were pissed off ownership was pissed off uh it felt like everyone was ready to give up on the sport uh people kept saying I don't care and then as soon as that info hit last night that baseball was back you would have never thought a fan had anything negative to say it's it's what we do we all said we were pissed off wouldn't care if season ended at this point and as soon as we got our info it was back we all got super excited uh and uh, you know what I don't care yeah. we don't know what's the news hit I actually went and jumped into the pool with my clothes on I got to admit I was kind are you serious yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I have to admit, I was kind of like, I wonder how he's feeling because this whole time, like we've been talking through over text and like, I know, understandably so, like everyone else, you've been frustrated and just kind of like, I don't care at this point. Like basically what everyone else was saying, I was getting to that point too, very close. I was holding on a little bit longer, but I was getting to the point where I was just frustrated and over it. And I was like, man, when that news hits, I'd love to know what his reaction is because I have a feeling it's not going to be the same frustration that he has said it would be because like at the end of the day, (laughs) at the end of the day, like this is I've I've always compared the Dodgers, at least my relationship with them to a toxic relationship. You basically tell them to F off and that they're bad for you. And as soon as they come crawling back, you're like arms wide open and you know you're going to get hurt. You know they're going to piss you off, You but you don't care. You're going to go back and you're going to be happy about it as if like they're the best thing in the world. But you know what? Right now, thousand percent agree with you there. Right about now, though, I, I would say this is probably the best thing that's happening for any type of sports fan, at least baseball fan. Um because God knows I needed this. I'd like, I couldn't sleep last night. I was so excited. I stayed up until almost midnight, like working. Usually I'm in, sen- uh, no, I'm in, what am I in right now? Am I in the mountain time zone? I think I'm in. <laughs> in two, two hours ahead, right? Yeah. 
Is that central? Oh, yeah, because mountain time is one hour. So, yeah, central time. Yeah. So I'm two hours ahead. And, like, usually I kind of, because it's not baseball season, like, I usually end my nights around 10, 1030. So it's 8 o'clock back home L.A. time. And I'm like, news isn't breaking that late. It's not. It's technically kind of like the off season. So we're not getting news. And, like, last night, like, I was up working till almost midnight. And then, like, when I tried to go to sleep, I couldn't sleep. And I had been tired all day with a headache. And then... I woke up at like 4.30 in the morning and stayed awake for two more hours just like scrolling through Twitter. Like I just, I was so excited. I woke up this morning and I was like, oh my God, we still have to wait another month until opening day, but we're going to get there. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I I, I haven't. Only seen... enough, <laughs> last night was the best sleep I've gotten in a while. Yeah, I, it was good sleep while I had it. It was trying to go to sleep. That was the problem. It was just minimum, yeah. Yeah, it was like when I was in the sleep, I was knocked out. It was good sleep. But like when I woke up, like my mind could not stop racing about, holy shit, baseball's back. Like that's all I could keep thinking was waking up in the middle of the night. And I'm just like, I'm actually going to get to watch the Dodgers on a field. God forbid anything happens with coronavirus. Uh, we still have to worry about that. Player safety is still number one. Um, it. It, it kind of feels weird because I almost feel like everybody's not everybody, but a lot of people are kind of just brushing over that fact right now. And um, <laughs> we can't do that. We can't just kind of brush over it as if coronavirus isn't there. However, I just want my 24 hours of like joy and happiness before people start coming in and going, hey, coronavirus might screw this up because there's a very right. good there's a very, very good chance coronavirus could come and screw up the season before spring training even starts. Um but you know what? If we lose if we lose the sport to the virus, I can accept that a lot more than losing the sport just because owners and players don't want to get along and agree on the same thing. That was frustrating me. If we have to lose the sport because of pandemic, I can deal with that. It's not the sport hurting itself. Um it's just for the it's what we have to do, but having the sport basically shoot itself in the foot is what was killing me the most during all of this. So uh, we may never see a game, but it's on the schedule and that is what I'm excited about. And I feel like that's what everybody is excited about. It's some glimpse of hope in what has been an awful last, especially the last month, month and a half has been so difficult, but just overall the last three, four months, um, it feels like things are to an extent coming back to normal things will never go back to our normal normal we're never going to have a normal again that we were all used to but at least it's pushing in the right direction even if the games are going to be the furthest thing from normal um but with that said there is plenty of new information coming out about what's going on in this proposal um Usually I'm, I know our listeners all know this by now because a lot of them comment on it, but I do most of the talking. Do you want me to handle this? And you, I know you prefer to jump in when it fits best. Do you want to do that this way? Or was there anything right. in the proposal or not? Yeah, proposed? I was, I was going to say that uh, I was going to let you handle it because my notes are all jumbled. So everything I have down is probably not in order and it wouldn't make, I mean, it would make sense, but it would, it wouldn't be in order of what was going on. So, all right. So then yeah. I'll jump into it. And then if you have anything to say or think there's anything to discuss or I missed anything, just jump on in and let me know. And I think I'll just, I'll give my thoughts on everything once you finish. All right. So. First things first, what the 2020 season will look like. We are still waiting on an official opening day date, uh, which could be July 23rd or July 24th. However, we do have a date for spring training. Players must report no later than July 1st so they can get their coronavirus testing, antibodies test, all of that done. And then the official start date for spring, spring training 2.0 is July 3rd. And the um, it's kind of like regular spring training, except now they have to do this. They have no choice, but teams must stagger the arrival of players at the stadium for spring training. So pitchers and catchers are supposed to show up first. And then you have position players probably show up a day or two later so they can do their routine of testing, getting all that stuff, make sure that they're not just throwing 60 guys uh, into the stadium all at one time. So 
Next, we will get into the schedule because that's obviously very important. There's only going to be 60 games this season. Uh, They did say the season would end September 27th. So it's basically right on line to end when it usually does give us playoffs in uh, October. As of now, there doesn't seem to be any change for the playoffs coming into October from what I read I believe the players have the final say in playoffs being expand, uh, expand, expanded. So I think because the league was not willing to give in to their 60 game proposal and what they wanted, I don't know if we will see expanded playoffs because what I was reading was the issue with expanded playoffs where ownership would be making more money. However, the players revenue was not going to change. They were not going to make more money if playoffs were expanded, which was why they were willing to do expanded playoffs if ownership had given into their proposal because ownership was going to make more money off the expanded playoffs and not the players. So don't know what's going to happen there, but for the time being, there will be a 60 game season uh, with teams playing against their own division as well as their interleague division. So that means the AL West and the NL West will be in the same division, AL Central, NL Central, same division, and then the AL East and the NL East will be in the same division. division. So they're doing this to obviously minimize travel, give us more teams than just playing our division. Uh, But we will play 10 games against each team in our division. So 10 against the Padres, 10 against the D-backs, 10 against the Rockies, and 10 against the Giants. And then there will be 20 games in total against the AL West. Six of those games will come against the Angels because they are What they're trying to do is incorporate an extra game or two for those interleague rivals. We have the freeway series, like the Mets and Yankees have their subway series. The Chicago has their, I don't know what they call it, but they have the, their AL and NL team, uh, for the white Sox and Cubs. So your interleague rival, you will play two more games. They don't necessarily know how many games will, there will be 14 more games. They don't know yet how that will be split between the A's, the Astros, the Mariners and the Rangers. But really quickly, let's pause on that part because I did say the Astros, uh, we're going to be playing them this year in the regular season at Dodger stadium, as well as Minute Maid Park. Jim Crane went on record today that he hopes at some point fans are allowed in Minute Maid Park. Uh, I don't know if that's something the Astros really want, (laughs) to be 100% honest, because we are in the middle of a pandemic and people have time to travel. They may not have the money, but when it comes to sports, I think we've all seen people will find a way to get the money even if they don't have it. Uh, I could see if the Dodgers go there and the stadium's open, I could see an interesting uh, dynamic there and actually possibly see more Dodger fans there than Astro fans. I've already seen Dodger fans on Twitter saying they would take a road trip to Houston, go. uh, So that'll be interesting. I'd love to see a good old Joe Kelly fight club come to life. I am... You, I usually don't want to see players get hit unless like, you know, they're going to hit them in the thigh or the, they're going to hit them in the butt or something like that. I'm okay with that. Like it's kind of part of the game, but when it comes to the Astro, uh, look, I don't want anyone to get hit in the head. We don't need any serious injuries as much as I hate them. Uh, they are still human beings. We don't need to ruin their career over this. Uh, at least not physically. If, if they want to suck and ruin their own career, that's fine. They did a lot of damage to other guys careers, but I just don't know if injury is the way to go about it. However, I will not be upset and I will not complain if any Dodger gets himself tossed from a game. Uh, as long as it's not a game, that's like two ga- a couple games left and it's a every game's in a matter which is weird because 60 games every single game's in a matter but I think you guys get the point uh just we'll see what happens but playing the Astros should be a good time uh their their fans have already been blowing up my Twitter account so my mute button has been put to a lot of work the last 24 hours because I cannot stand those that fan base and I have absolutely no desire to read anything that they have to say so um anyways Let's keep going. As of now, there will be no double headers. They had talked about doing double headers because I believe it's like 60 games in 66 days, something crazy like that. So guys really aren't going to have many off games. However, if there is a postponement due to weather, um, so not a rain delay, but just 
game doesn't start, too many players have the virus or whatever the case may be, they would most likely have to reschedule that as a double header. And then with the whole schedule, um, it is a tentative schedule because the players union must approve it, but it doesn't sound like there will be any issues on that end when it comes to scheduling. Um, another thing is all of the rule changes we will be seeing this year. Unfortunately for NL fans, I feel like most of them are on this side of things, but we will have a universal DH for the 2020 season and the postseason. Uh, the, the reason they are doing this is to help k- keep pitchers healthy. So I get it. They're already throwing players out there on a shortened season. You don't want someone like Kershaw going out there, his first or second start in pulling something as he runs to first and then he's out for the rest of the season. So I completely understand it. I hate the DH, but I get it for the 2020 season. Um, It is no longer a part of the 2021 season because again, that had to do with the proposal uh, that MLBPA and the league were sending back and forth. Now, because MLB had to implement a season, 2021 DH is officially off the table. uh, So that is... They, I did read an article. Some reporters think that we may never see pitchers hit again because of this, that it could just end up seeing the DH in 2021 as well, but we don't know. Uh, it is. It will be the first time in history, though, that pitchers have never had to hit in a Major League Baseball game. So that's history on its own. This entire season is going to be history. Um, we kind of look back at the old games as fans and be like, wow, that's crazy. Imagine like being at those games at those series living through that season a strike season whatever the case may be and it's like we're living through this this season is going to be talked about forever um a hundred years from now so it's it's going to be interesting season it's all changing very very different um the IL will be 10 days this year for all players including pitchers it's usually 15 days for pitchers because they don't want them sending them up and down just after one start Um, and the 60 day IL will be changed to 45 days. Extra inning games will start with a runner on second base to try and cut back time players spent on the field. Uh, pitchers will not be charged for the runner starting on second. So this will begin in the 10th inning, uh, top of the 10th moving forward. You will see runners on second base to start the inner to start the inning and pitchers if that run comes across pitchers will not be charged for the runner it's basically as if the runner reached on an error that's how they're going to charge it however nobody's going to get an error uh, but that pitcher will be charged with the win or loss depending on what happens when they're on the mound if that run comes across or doesn't or their team walks it off um, however good news This is only for the regular season and would be dropped during the postseason. So at least we know we will not have to watch this come October. Um, Also, a new rule they had implemented in 2020 was that position players were only allowed to pitch in blowout games. They did not want teams using their position players uh, to throw guys out there just to whether keep the game non-competitive, teams tanking, whatever the case may be. That was something they decided they did not want to allow anymore. However, they have now reversed that rule for 2020 and position players are allowed to pitch at any time. Again, it's an injury thing. You have no idea how long starters are going to go out there the first couple weeks and how long they're going to last. So got to take care of the guys, all of them. So I don't I don't mind it. Uh, Position players pitching stress me out, but. (laughs) It's better than someone getting hurt. So if a game gets rained out, it will be considered a suspended game. Usually we see a rain delay, whether it's an hour, two hours. I think we've even sat through three hour rain delays before. That's not going to happen this year. This year, if there is a rain delay, they are just going to call the game. It's suspended. They will come back and play it and start it a different day. However, they do not want to hold the players in the clubhouse and keep them all kind of in one space for a period of time because of potential spread of the virus. So um, we will not be sitting through an hour, two hour rain delays. If that happens, luckily uh, here on the West coast, we don't have that problem too much. And really outside, I think of, I would say the Mariners and the giants. I, well, I guess the A's too, because the A's are now 
we would be playing them. So I guess besides those three teams, we don't really have to deal with any weather that would be like that. So hopefully we got Minute Maid is indoors. I think Texas new stadium is indoors. Uh, well, I see as it, it has a roof. Yeah. Yeah. And then D backs have a roof. So shouldn't be a big deal for the Dodgers. If it does happen, it's bound to happen. And uh, actually, well, the Rockies, I guess too, would be an issue. As oh well. yeah, that's well, true. It could be the Rockies. Yeah. I always forget that they, their weather's all over the place. You never know what can happen with them. Good old Coors Field. Um, so yeah, no more rain delays. And then beginning this Friday, they had put a hold on all transactions, whether it was trades, signing free agents, whatever the case may be. I don't remember exactly when that happened, but it was shortly after season was put on hold. Uh, so nobody has been signed since this all started. Nobody's been traded on Friday at noon Eastern time. That fr- transaction freeze will be lifted and teams will be allowed to sign and trade players again which is actually very interesting because by Sunday noon Eastern time, so only a 48 hour difference, teams must submit their 60 player pool that they can have to choose from their roster. So basically a new thing they're doing for this season is teams will be allowed to have a 60 player pool uh, that they can just pull from their roster. You obviously have the 40 man roster and then you'll pull 20 more guys, whatever the case may be. And they can use them throughout the season on taxi squad, whatever the case. So about half the players will be on a taxi squad at a separate location, staying prepared in case of an injury or illness. But because they have to submit those 60 names by Sunday at noon Eastern time, I don't know how all these trades or signings are going to go once things open back up on Friday. I would imagine since there is a trade deadline this season, uh, which I will talk about in a little bit. I would imagine you can just like if someone on your 60 man roster, you swap them out and then have to make that adjustment to put someone on the 40 man. If you're replacing who knows, this is all going to be weird, but uh, I have a feeling we might see quite a few signings happen this weekend. Uh, One hanging on the board that we keep seeing people talk about is Puig before the season was put on pause. There was a lot of talks about him going to San Francisco. So we will see if those rumors are true, most likely on Friday or Saturday. Um, But yeah, all 60 players are able to show up to Major League Spring Training Facility, but players who aren't on the 40-man roster can be sent to an alternate spring training facility. Uh, So that's how they are going to do all of that. They can still show up to spring training. They can practice with the Dodgers, but if they want to send them to a different facility, which I'd imagine might be like Rancho Cucamonga, something like that, the Dodgers are able to do that. So that way they only have the 40 man roster at the big league stadium, if that's what they choose. Uh, And taxi squad players will not receive MLB service time, which I know will upset some people, but in a way, I also get it. Um, I'm, I'm not a fan that they're not being paid like major league players. I think they're getting paid like on the minor league side money. I do not think that is cool because these guys are having to basically just be ready to go at all times uh, and they're putting their health on the line. So, but I understand not giving them service time because these guys on the taxi squad could end up playing maybe one big league game and you're not going to give a guy who should be in AAA this year an entire year of service time. So that much I do understand. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the pay, but we've seen how they like to treat their minor leaguers with pay. So it's not that uh, surprising. When season starts, it will start with a 30-man roster for the first two weeks of the season. On the 15th day of the season, it will go down to 28 men. And then at two weeks after that, it'll go down to 26. And 26 is the size roster we will have this year. That was actually a new rule that was supposed to be put in place for the 2020 season either way. So we will no longer have 25-man roster. We will have 26-man roster. And um, another rule that has always been implemented is teams can only have so many pitchers. I want to say it was on a 25 man roster. They could only have 13 pitchers at max. Uh, However, because of coronavirus and injuries, there is no limit this year. Teams can have as many pitchers as possible on their roster. Um, So again, that'll be super interesting. We'll see how that goes. Um, I kind of feel like that's how we're going to be talking about the entire season is we'll, we'll see how that goes. Cause (laughs) this is all going to be interesting to see how it plays out. I'm excited, but it's going to be interesting. Um, 
things are also going to be a little different for the players in regards to their equipment and what they have to do on that side of things. Um, all hitters will now have to bring their own pine tar rags, bat donuts, and other equipment to and from the on-deck circle and will have to retrieve their own caps, gloves, and sunglasses from the dugout if an inning ends with them on base or batting. All pitchers will now have to bring their own rosin bag to the mound and use only their own baseballs for bullpen sessions. And baseballs used in batting practice can be used only that day, then need to be cleaned and sanitized and not be reused for at least five days. Um, so they're going to use a lot of baseballs, uh, a lot, a lot of baseballs. And the thing that I really hope there's a way for them to sanitize these baseballs instead of just like tossing them out because they go through a stupid amount of baseballs as is. Uh, and now you can't reuse a ball if it's more than five days older. So, uh, kind of, kind of interesting there. I, I hope they'll kind of, I hope they'll keep a number on that. I always find it interesting when you realize just how many balls they go through. And then a couple other things that are changing. These are just kind of like random things we'll see throughout throughout the cha- uh, season or what players are able to do. So players are able to opt out whether they are high risk or not. However, high risk players will receive pay and service time, whereas hi- non high risk players, they won't get paid. And I don't think they'll receive service time either, but I'm not 100 percent sure on that. Uh, MLB also has the right to relocate teams to neutral sites during the season. If issues with coronavirus arise, players will be prohibited to arriving to the stadium more than five hours before start time and can't stay longer than 90 minutes after a game. Reporters must leave the stadium with one within one hour of their postgame interviews. Showering at the ballpark is discouraged but not prohibited. The trade deadline will now be August 31st, and players must be on the roster by September 15th to be eligible for postseason play. So shout out to those rental players that are going to last a whole 27 days or whatever it is. That's going to suck. Um, replay rooms are off limits to Tier 1 individual at all times. Tier 1 is mostly all the players. Uh, so basically, players are not going to have access to the replay room. They say this is due to physical distancing, but I think we all know this is also part of MLB trying to combat some cheating, especially in a shortened season. Um, After a huge, huge cheating scandal, I think they're going to say it's due to physical distancing, which I think is part of it. But I also think it's just their way of not wanting to deal with any more uh, trouble to this whole 2020 that baseball has already seen. There will be no high fives, no no fist bumps, no hugging, no spitting, no sunflower seeds, and players who have pregnant spouses can go on a three-day paternity leave and still be paid. If it's a family emergency, players can leave for up to seven days and receive play. If the player needs to leave longer than seven days, it's up to the club whether or not they want to pay the player. And then the final thing, which is probably the most important thing we need to talk about, which hasn't gotten much um, spotlight yet is all the testing they're going to do and everything that they're going to do for uh, players when it comes to coronavirus. So the pre-screening is going to go three or four days before arriving at spring training. Covered individuals must submit a questionnaire about symptoms and exposure. Roughly two or days before reporting to camp, players and all covered individuals will have a temperature check. I'm assuming covered individuals is coaching staff, training staff. They didn't put who exactly, but I'm assuming it's all those, those main guys. Um, so roughly two or three days before reporting to camp, players will have a temperature check, a saliva or nose swab test for diagnosis and a blood test for antibodies. The antibodies one to me is huge because even if the players, I know testing for everything right now is still kind of, we don't know all that we need to know about Corona, but, um, finding out how many of these players have anti antibodies would be huge. Uh, apparently MLB didn't even begin testing players until the last week or so, uh, is what I've been told. I've talked to family members from two separate teams and one from one team has not even been tested yet. And one from another team just got their first test in the last week. So, uh, let's just hope MLB is going about this a little bit better because I have a feeling a lot. There's a reason why we're seeing all of these tests come up positive. I 
I think it's pretty safe to say MLB really hasn't done much testing because if they did, we would not have gone two or three months without hearing about a positive test. There's no way that was even possible that that happened. Um, so it's pretty crazy to me that they just started doing a bunch of testing, but let's hope a lot of those players, I mean, I don't want any of them to be sick, but it'd be nice if a lot of them have antibodies because then it means they contracted it and had no idea, which means they're doing okay and they're healthy and they're probably asymptomatic. But if they have the antibodies, it hopefully means that they cannot transmit it elsewhere. Um, so we'll see what happens there. Their regular monitoring will have covered individuals have their temperature and sy symptoms checked at least twice per day, all tier one individuals, which again is players, and it includes everyone in uniform as well as trainers, physical therapists, and strength co coaches will have saliva tests every other day. Everyone else is to undergo testing multiple times per week. The frequency can change if need be, and results are expected in about 24 hours. About once per month, everyone will also have antibody tests. Uh, that one's interesting to me. I don't know how testing every other day is going to work because if you're asymptomatic and one dude catches it one day, 24, if you're waiting every other day, that is 24 hours that you're waiting for the next test and then 24 hours a result. That's 48 hours that this could possibly transmit through the entire clubhouse. Uh, so that's not great. Hopefully they'll find something a little bit better than that in that these players are actually really taking the shutdown uh, seriously because if any of them goes out, especially in some of these states that are climbing like crazy, like California, Arizona, Texas, Florida, um, they could do some real damage to their teammates even just by going out and picking up dinner for the night. So the biggest thing I think it, testing is incredibly important. They need to take care of their players as well as their family members. Uh, it can't just be with the players. It needs to be everybody that is in their household as well needs to be taken care of. Uh, but it does a lot of it is going to fall on the players whether or not they are going to actually follow these restrictions because if they don't it won't matter how much testing MLB does uh, they will not be able to stop the spread if the players don't do their side of things and then last but not least there will be a coronavirus related IL with no minimum or maximum length of placement a player may be placed on that list based on a positive coronavirus test confirmed exposure or if a player exhibits symptoms requiring self-isolation for further assessment Huh. So that's about uh, yeah, that was a lot to get through. Yeah, that was about three pages of a lot of things we're gonna <laughs> see changing. So uh yeah, I'm gonna have a drink of water. You go ahead and talk about whatever you okay. think needs to be talked yeah. about. Okay, so uh last night uh Bob Nightingale had said that players that uh families that have high risk can opt out. So, like you said, apparently he was lying about that, which is very unfortunate because I think it's important that players who have families that are at high risk still be paid and get service time. And like, it's really difficult for some of the players who are on the bubble and really struggling with this because they still need to get paid. But at the same time, they want to be there for their families. Like Pollock, for example, whose daughter was born four months uh, premature there could be underlying risks there if he was somehow able to get it and give it to her. So I know it's an eternal struggle for like a lot of players that way. Um, did you hear about the two teams in Nashville? The unsigned players? Yeah, I did. Um, what I was reading on the athletic article today was it sounds like the Nashville sounds. I don't know whose minor league team that is is wanting to take in their players and basically treat it like an independent league. However, what I read this morning was that it no longer isn't about Nashville wanting to do two teams. They're talking about potentially other organizations just also doing it. So maybe not just Nashville, but potentially other uh, organizations jumping in as well. So I don't know if there, I'm assuming there wouldn't be games, but who knows, I guess you could do if you have enough guys, you could, but, yeah, I don't know too much about that, but I did find that very interesting. Okay, so the Nashville Sounds are the minor league affiliate of the Texas Rangers. Um, and I thought the idea was interesting, but the paying $400 a week like the minor leaguers get doesn't seem all that 
good because, like, I think they can collect six hundred dollars a week off of unemployment. But at the same time, I I get it because this will give them a chance to stay in shape and play baseball at the off chance that maybe they get signed by a team. So uh, I thought that was interesting. You had brought up the schedule. Yes, we get to play the Astros. If you do, <laughs> uh, I'm very intrigued by how the Dodgers players like react to the Astros players. Like, what is it going to be like between Correa and Bailey since they had exchanged words? So that I am very interested in. Um, you had mentioned them being thrown at and had said Joe Kelly. Yes, because I am also a fan of the Joe Kelly Fight Club, but <laughs> at the same time, he can be a bit erratic. So while you might not want somebody to get hit in the head, Joe Kelly can be erratic at times, and that just might be the outcome. Whether it, it's on purpose it or might. Not. Oh, it might be, but I think if we, I know of at least two instances. We've seen Kelly hit the target when he wanted to, one being Hanley Ramirez and then one being the dude who's not even important enough to remember his name oh, man, on uh, on uh, the Yankees. So obviously that Hanley one hurts, but it seems like when he goes to hit someone, he gets the job done. We've now seen one in the ribs and one in the elbow that blocked the rib. So I think I think Kelly has a, a certain spot he likes to go for. But no, I get what you're saying. I figured there's Gratterall too, but... A uh, big fan of Joe Kelly. I just think Gratterall might. I don't know if I want him in that situation. I think, no, yeah, yeah I, I think I'd rather take the him. loss of Kelly for a game or two, and also just the fact that he's older and been doing it longer. I don't want to put that on a rookie. So give it. I'd give it yeah. to Baez too, because yes, I was gonna say because yeah. according to Bellinger, he yeah, he's scary as hell. Baez. Yeah, yeah. So, and yeah, Baez is a big dude. Joe Kelly, I feel like, could get his ass kicked. Uh, he'll hold his own. He's going to fight you no matter the size, but he's a small dude. Uh, Baez, I don't know if there's too many people that are going to want to charge the mound. And if I'm Baez, I've probably got some anger pent up from being booed by our <laughs> my own fan base so many times. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, and, I mean, we're already kind of back on his side, but that would be a great way to really just be like, we are Joe Bias. I mean, not Joe. <laughs> we are Pedro Bias fans now. Oh, he uh, he would. Uh, everybody would like bow down to him in a heartbeat. If he threw it an Astro, and like even if the Astro didn't charge them, like I just, which is interesting because how are players going to handle that? Are players willing to risk contracting the disease, the illness, virus, whatever, if it means they get to be in a brawl? And I wonder how quickly do umpires throw players out because they don't want it to get to that point. Are they, right. if it seems intentional, do they even get a warning or do they get ejected right away because they don't want players getting close enough? You're not going to want your catcher. I think they would get ejected right away. Yeah. So I, I, I kind of feel the same way. Uh, we've always seen the Dodgers be very traditional, very classy in how they handle themselves. Uh, last year when we saw Max Muncy and Bellinger, kind of go off I feel like that's kind of something newer that we haven't seen from the Dodgers too much uh Muncy kind of going after Bumgarner the way he did belly kind of taunting the Diamondbacks reliever like that's not just that's usually not stuff you see I feel like coming from the Dodgers organization which I'm totally right. fine for as long as it's the players on the field doing it and like it, they're doing it in like as long as the Dodgers to me aren't being the petty ones who are doing it first, like if let's reverse the role, if some, if one of the Dodger pitchers ended up being Bumgarner in that situation, then I'd be pissed off. I'd be like, come on, dude, let's not go down that route. Uh, but I, I like it. There's a fire and I just, I kind of think that it could be interesting, but again, at the same time with coronavirus, um, I'll be interested to hear, though, what's going on in the dugouts during those games because players are going to hear everything. I'm wondering if the players are going to try and say things that are going to get into the heads of Astros because they know the Astros can hear them. If DJ Severe or Dieter Rule are going to be playing some type of music when they walk up that you know the Astros can't not hear because there's not going to be anyone in the stadium. Um, so that kind of stuff is going to be interesting to me. I'm excited to play the Astros. Um, I'm just excited to see them be a team that doesn't get to cheat. They don't have Cole. Uh, they don't get to cheat. Verlander's barely coming back after he had surgery. So I'm, and a lot of them are facing some very, 
uh, down morale right now. So I'm all for it. And I just hope they get embarrassed. I hope someone else comes out of that AL West. I don't know who. The Angels should have got some pitching. It could have possibly been them. But the closest team has been the A's. The A's have been the closest yeah. team. Yeah, that's true. And I feel like the A's and the Mariners are also both teams that have the last couple seasons. The Mariners, surprisingly, they start the season off pretty well. Um, the Mariners, I think, two years ago were one of the better teams in baseball and then just completely fell apart. I think it was 2018 when the Dodgers actually went to Seattle. Um, I remember there was a time and point I was watching them a lot because I was like, oh, there's a chance. Maybe they could beat the Astros. And then they ended up just like dying the last two months of the season. So um yeah you never know the dodgers they started out they started out hot last year too like they lost like a i don't know 12 and 2 start yeah or faltering so yeah yeah so it's going to be interesting because if you look at the nationals i don't think the nationals even make the playoffs if we go to 60 yeah. game schedule last year so um absolutely not it's it's crazy it'll be a different thing it's i'm definitely a pure it's a traditionalist whatever you want to ca- call it when it comes to baseball uh the the one side that i don't stand on as a traditionalist is i do want bat flips i do want emotion that much i am okay with when it comes to the game itself i am a traditionalist as in gameplay and rules um i don't know i i i yeah. i it yeah, as a tradition no, yeah no sorry. sorry no 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 no. you're good I just I lost my train of thought for a second but then realized where I was going but all I was gonna <laughs> say was it's even as a traditionalist and all these changes I'm so excited for season I like I cannot wait I just want to see sports I'm bummed that I can't go to a game I have gone to a lot in the last couple years uh I'm bummed I won't be able to go with my friends they I mean I won't be able to see my friends there, but the fact that I get to sit at home and watch our team on the field, like I'm so, I I literally have not stopped smiling this entire podcast. Whereas the last nine episodes we recorded, including the one from last week, I've been basically like not depressed, but not very happy the entire time recording. Cause it's almost kind of like at that point, it was just felt like a job. Like we have to do this. Fans didn't want to talk about it. Fans didn't want to hear about it. Uh, but we had to do it cause it was part of the podcast and it's like, I'm ready to go. I hate the extra innings thing. Um, but I don't care. Oh, yeah, I, I'm going to get into all this in a minute. <laughs> dude, they had they they really had the chance to do better and to take Turner's idea. I would have taken Turner's home run idea in a heartbeat over the second the guy starting on second. Like I don't know. I don't know. As long as it's I have, I have thoughts. Go for it. Uh, but I want to start with the uh you had brought up the testing a lot earlier. Oh and yeah. The, how they're just gonna how they're just gonna start doing that. And I think most major sports kind of held off on the testing. Uh and that's why the positive tests are coming out now because there have been like there's a scheduled place now, so now they can really start testing. I think they wanted to wait until there was something official to do these tests, and now that something's official or getting close to becoming official, more tests will be done. So I do agree that there will probably be more players uh testing positive. Uh, hopefully it's not enough to derail the season because that would be really unfortunate. But player safety is obviously of the utmost uh, importance. Um, as far as having the season back goes, I, I am I'm excited. I'm glad that we won't have to go through the back and forth anymore. It was incredibly frustrating and infuriating just to, to watch them go back and forth over – I mean, I won't say they're dumb things because they're not dumb things, but uh, the players are standing on something and the owners just kept putting out the same proposal over and over again. So what do you expect? A different answer? You weren't going to get one. So I'm glad we were not the no longer to that. I'm also that we no longer have to get through John Heyman tweeting the same bullshit over and over again, worded differently, him saying things that don't even matter. John Heyman's frustrating. <laughs> That's all I was going to say. Uh, but I am excited that baseball is back. But I'm also trying to contain my excitement just in case, you know, anything happens with the virus and whatnot. Um, I, I I just really am excited that my favorite sport is coming back, especially with all this craziness going on in the world and just all these really depressing things. It's going to be nice to get 
a two, three, four hour break where I can just get lost in the game, recharge, and get ready for more uh, social justice fight afterward. Uh, personally, this is just me speaking. Uh, since the season is so short, the wins and losses are not going to be important to me. Um, I, I mean, I talked about this with you, and I think there are bigger questions that need to be answered. So I'm going to use this 60 game uh, sample to see how, like, how does Gavin Lux look? Uh, is Will Smith the answer behind the plate? Is re-signing Kike the right move? How is Corey Seager? Is he the old Corey Seager? And if he is, do the Dodgers re-sign him to a long-term extension? And if that's the case, does that mean Lux is the second baseman for the foreseeable, be- for the foreseeable future? Uh, what about Pedro Baez and Blake Charney? Because they have pitchers in the wing like Gratterall and Santana, and some of these new pitchers they had just drafted could be used as bullpen options as well. So what does the future look like for them? Uh, there are, and then, of course, Jock Peterson's a free agent. What happens with Jock? Does he come back? I doubt it, but, I mean, that's still a possibility. So during the season, I will be looking for questions to those answers mostly, and all in all, just seeing how the young players progress or not, and, uh, I'm just I'm happy I get to watch the the sport I love finally, and um, so as far as the rules go, what was it? The universal DH next season and the extra innings begin with a run on second base, right? Yeah. Okay, so as a baseball purist, it'll I be don't like sorry. The it'll so it'll be in the regular season, but it won't be in the postseason. Okay, that's right. Okay, so like yeah, as a baseball purist, I don't like the DH, even though I find it incredibly painful to watch pitchers hit, it's part of what real baseball is. So that's this is how I see it. But since there will be a universal DH, uh, I'm slightly excited because the Dodgers can really use this to their advantage. I mean, they have Peterson there, Pollock, TK, Taylor, Lux, Seager, Turner, Muncy, Betts, Bellinger to give somebody days off. Uh, I mean, the, the possibilities are endless. Of course, you also have Beatty, maybe even Edwin Rios. There's a lot of really good players that Dodgers could use in that spot. And as much as I don't like it, it, it'll be really nice to get rid of that one true weak spot in the lineup, which would be the pitcher spot. Now, the extra anything for the run beginning on second base, uh, <laughs> I, I see what they're trying to do trying to save players from these super long games, especially with the, the climate that's going on. And I know they've kind of been doing this in the minor leagues for the last few years. Um, not really a fan of it. Um, it. It doesn't really feel like baseball to me. Um, but I, I don't know. I, I did see that uh, someone posted that most games in the minors – when doing this, the extra inning games end within the first two innings. So for the players' sake, that works. But I'm hoping this is just a, a one-year thing. I did see Alex, to your point, I did see Alex Wood say that if this is the route they wanted to go, they should have just done the swing off, which is essentially Justin Turner's idea. Uh, I get it, but I'm not a fan of that one either. I would actually prefer the second base option. Uh, I'll just have to think of it as, Someone got a leadoff double, even though that's not what it is. Uh, at least it would still kind of feel like, semi like real baseball because the pitchers still have to pitch, still have to get outs, prevent runs from scoring, and all that, as opposed to a makeshift home run derby to determine a winner. Yeah, it might be more entertaining for you guys, but for as a baseball purist, I I don't like the idea I- at all. So I prefer the second base option. I mean, screw the entertaining factor. Put it up with the fact that no team is out slugging the Dodgers minus the Twins and the Yankees. So I just take it as an easy. Yankees, yeah. I take it as an easy W in the regular season. But I get what you're saying. Um, I I do prefer the more baseball like of extra innings because you could keep going into extra innings. It's actual baseball. So I will agree with that. I guess. The only reason why I say I prefer the home run derby is because of an advantage on our end. And I don't have any stats to back this because it's something that just came to my head. And as a Dodger fan, I feel like we just always see this. But I feel like we are god awful with runners in scoring position. If our guys, if our pitchers can keep the guys off base or at first base, 
we're okay. We don't usually have too many problems with the bullpen. Starting pitching, I'm not too stressed out. I feel like they can do, they're pretty decent with guys get on running base. But that bullpen, man, when people get on base, like that's what I'm stressed out about is all it takes is one hit and the game could be on the line. And yeah. our bullpen, I believe, um, is, I do think our bullpen is better than people give it uh, yeah. cred- credit for. I know there's, it's hard because you can't really just look at like ERA for bullpen uh, cause you have inherited runners, stuff like that. But the Dodgers bullpen hasn't been as bad as people, even as myself, as I'm sitting here and like bashing them for it. They're not as bad as I think we kind of give them credit for. They're not great. Last year they finished uh, kind of in the middle of the pack. I want to say, so we'll see what happens. Um, either way, we just, we got to live with it as always. We have no choices fans, but at the end of the day, I'm going to take it a hundred times over having no baseball because it just, it now gives us right. a chance. Um, how well, I, I, I get where you're coming from. It is easier for the Dodgers to win with the home run derby, but I, for me, I think I would just rather take the loss at a semi real baseball standpoint than winning off a home run derby because that seems too easy but it is all about the wins I get it but I want to see how players do in these when they're forced into these positions because for the most part they put them they put themselves in this position by giving up we don't think of doubles home runs whatever but now they're forced in situation I want to see how the pitchers I will do all that I will say this is a big point to what you made earlier about Pedro Baez. This, something like this, because it is, like you mentioned it being his last year in his contract, I will say doing it this way does give guys like him the opportunity to show the Dodgers, hey, I might only get to pitch in 30, 40 games, whatever it is this season, but let's say eight out of 10 times when that runner started on second, he didn't give up a hit or he didn't give up the run. The guy never scored. So um, I will say it does work an advantage to what you were talking about earlier. It will be a good test for relievers. Um, Joe Kelly, that was a, his was a three-year deal. So that won't matter much. Um, But yeah, like with Baez, I think Alexander's on a one-year deal. I don't. Yeah, Blake Trinan's on a one-year deal. Yeah. I don't know what Cleric's on. Um. But yeah, Jansen, I think, has this season and what, one more after that? Uh, so, yeah, so well, he, he has an option. Longer than Tristan Turner. Yeah, he has an option. So it's up to him. I doubt he goes anywhere. Um, but yeah, so it, it, to your point, you do make a good point there. It will show those sides much different. So I will say that. And also, again, from the hitter standpoint as well, I want to see like, the runner starts at second. I want to see how Lux does in that position. Smith, some of the younger players, see how they do in those uh, situations. You did say that Dodgers, it feels like the Dodgers aren't very good at runners in score position. Uh, I get, I don't have the numbers either, but I would agree. It's, it feels like, especially when they have like the base loaded with no act. I mean, it's like most of the time they don't score. Do you, it's like, how the hell is that possible? Do you really need numbers if you watch the 2019 NLDS? <laughs> Oh, I mean, because I don't think we need numbers to realize how god awful they were with runners in scoring position. Besides, like one game, the one game in Washington, I think they had game three or whatever, and outside of that, they were freaking a disaster. Four. Game four, yeah, whatever it was, game one of four. them. Because game three, I was at a wrestling event, so I missed it, but I was following it on Twitter, and I remember Russell Martin hitting. Yeah, it was whatever run. Martin, whatever game Martin hit that, that run. home run in. But uh, no, I think it's. I will say, as a fan of your own team, it's always going to be easier for fans to be like, my team sucks at this, we're worse at this. Every single fan is going to say that their team can't hit with running and scoring position. Every single team is going to say their bullpen suck, even the number one bullpen. It's how we are as fans. Um, I'm not too worried. I don't know how playoffs are going to be. It sounds like it's not expanded, so we're still going to have our 10 teams. Uh, We'll see how that is. We've seen the Dodgers come out and do awful the first month. We've seen them come out and do great the first month. Uh, Good news is we won't have to see Justin Turner in April. So hopefully he'll come out hitting those bombs right off the start because we we can't we can't uh, use 30 days of 
April Justin Turner this year that will not be good for us. Um, well, as long as he's getting hits, I guess we don't need the home runs. We've got enough power in that lineup. But uh, right. it's it's going to be different baseball, but it'll be fun. And um, I think fans are going to complain no matter what. But I Absolutely. I think we are set up a lot better than um, – I don't want to say most fans. I think, yeah, I want to say a lot of fans understand our depth, but I will say I think there are quite a few fans that don't understand how well the Dodgers are set up for this uh, because almost every single replacement they have is a quality starter on another team. So if you put out their starting lineup, you, anybody who gets hurt, Mookie Betts, you can replace him with a quality starter. That would be a starter on another team. Cody Bellinger, same thing. You can replace him with a guy that would be a starter on another team. So um, not for too long, though. No, not for too long. But it that that's going to be a big, big thing is how injuries pan out yeah. this year. Uh, because you know, if players are going to want to get themselves ready to go quickly, so they're probably going to push their bodies a little bit more. Hopefully, I'm really praying like they all just kept it quiet or at least the ones who have kept it quiet, but they've been training because if any of those guys have been lazy, we are in trouble. Uh, don't need them to get hurt. Like I'm not saying he's being lazy and I think players deserve it, but knowing Jock is in Idaho right now, a week before players need to be in LA, uh, is Ooh. Jock is currently oh, in Idaho at a lake Idaho? house. Yeah. Uh, on Instagram two days ago, he tagged Idaho. I think it was, uh, I just know it wasn't California. It was Idaho or Iowa. I think it was Idaho. Well, I mean, to be fair to Jack, he's always kind of, he's weird. Kind of yeah. He seems like state. he doesn't have to work out. But and he has he's fine. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> that's, that's, that's all he, he can hit right handers. That's all he needs to do. Well, and he he's could be in the field. Yeah. He's a solid DH guy too. You could put Taylor out there defensively. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but yeah, no, Agreed. I'm not. I'm not like worried about Jock or anything. I just I hope that prior to him going to Idaho, he's been like chilling at home, staying in shape. Cause uh, I don't. We don't need any of these guys getting hurt. Uh, losing a guy even to the ten day IL could be the end of your season if you lose someone who like Bellinger, Turner, Betts. Uh, ten day IL could cost you your entire season. So I, I think ten days might be okay because. You can replace them. Kike has these hot stretches. It's when he plays more that he starts getting exposed. So for that 10 days, I feel like we'll get like a really hot Kike. And it'll be fine until Betts comes back. If, if it's 20 plus games that Kike needs to be out there, we are going to be in trouble. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm not too, too concerned either way. I think that we have enough depth to cover those issues. I just do worry that if the team is slumping and like we lose our one hot hitter for the time being the uh how bad that could get so right oh wow hang on I'm excited. this is oh, okay. interesting really quickly uh so this is from the mariner ceo i don't know if we would actually dodgers have way more depth actually i think the mariners have a decent farm but anyways listen to what the mariner ceo said and then keith law uh he said Mariner CEO John Stanton tells 710 ESPN Seattle that he expects young prospects like Kalenic, Rodriguez, Rayleigh, Gilbert, Kirby, and even this year's first round draft pick to be on the 30 man taxi squad. That is crazy that they're talking about their first round draft pick from this year being on the taxi squad. Uh, I don't think well, that. The Mariners aren't good, so. No, that they're not, sense. but I think they have a decent <laughs> farm. So I don't know if they necessarily need the reason why it makes sense for the Mariners to do it is because they don't have minor leagues this year. And so that'll yeah. at least get their guys in. And so Keith law who writes for the athletic uh, said, expect every team to do this, even bringing prospects who clearly aren't ready for the majors to satellite the roster just to get them some sort of playing time. So I would imagine Beautiful. the, the Beautiful. division is still stacked up as they're doing it. Like it's not, the West, it's not like basketball where you're going to take the West, the Central, and the East. I know basketball, it's only West and East, but um, I think it's still going to be the top team from each individual division and then four wild card teams, two for each league. Uh, but it could be really interesting because the Dodgers don't have much competition in the NL West. The Diamondbacks could give them a little bit of trouble, but it just depends on how hot they come out of the gate. 
Uh, same thing with the Rockies. I just don't trust their pitching very much. Um, but again, that's the thing that scares me about the sixty games, though. Is I mean, it see, it might seem like a lot, but I feel like it could carry for twenty or thirty games. And if you just play five hundred baseball from there, you should be okay. So I do believe the Diamondbacks start out pretty quickly, and we know the Dodgers are notorious for starting out slow. So it, it's going to be weird. Again, I'm not too worried about it because it doesn't matter to me. I just want to see players do well. So, but it's definitely going to be interesting to, uh, to watch all that. Yeah, Dodgers have so much depth. I could not imagine seeing Bobby Miller out there. Uh, there, you would just have to go. I mean, they have like seven or eight quality starting pitchers, and some of them are in the minor yeah. leagues. Like, you would have to go through a lot of injuries. But it's interesting because you might see guys from other teams like the Rockies. I think he was out of college if he wasn't out of college then I take this back but Zach Veen uh I think he's high school okay then yeah he won't uh, we won't I don't I do not think they would ever put any high schoolers up there that would be I feel like terrible for their morale you would just see him get destroyed up there but I oh, feel like any yeah, of those fir- no, that would not be good for them yeah any of those first round picks that came out as like sophomores out of college our juniors uh I don't know how it works for baseball how many do you have to play a certain amount of years I know basketball and football how all that works but do you have to play you, um, no you don't because you, you can come straight out of high school so no you don't never mind you can come straight out of high school but if you go to college I think you have to wait till junior year unless you're like a registered sophomore because technically that would be your third year you just okay so you have years. to go to two years of college yeah Okay. Yeah. So yeah, I could see first round draft picks coming out of college, depending on the team they're playing for. But uh, yeah, not on teams like the Dodgers. I would not expect to see Bobby Miller. See, like, here's the thing. I can kind of see because the oh, sixty well, man the, taxi the squad, sixty man taxi that, squad. Uh, also, uh, I had said this last week, but the episode did come out, so I'm just gonna say to get here. Uh, there are scouts who think like Bobby Miller and uh. Clayton Beater uh, could be used as bullpen options this year. And then next year when it's kind of more normal, go back down and work on being the starter. I could so, see that. Okay. I could see that. Just not as starters, but maybe as bullpen pieces right, yeah. if they need it. Open I could see it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Especially they both throw hard. Yeah. And, and with know, like, it being a six. High velocity work in the playoffs. Yeah. And with a 60 man taxi squad they can still get him work and I, I'm curious as to how that taxi squad works like can you I'm assuming they can't swap guys out unless they're traded or signed um I don't know but I'm like yeah like I don't know how all that works but we'll know Sunday whether or not Bobby Miller's on there uh so that'll be interesting but something I did want to bring up and then we're gonna if if you don't have much more thoughts we're gonna have to get going because we're already over an hour I did want to say I did want to say one more thing about the taxi squad I don't remember if you did, but if you did, did you did you bring up that there is a three man taxi squad that can go with the team on the road and one has to be a catcher? No, I didn't, but I did see that. Okay. So yeah. Yeah, they have to I mean obviously Bobby Miller and then won't be on that, but maybe someone like K Bert Ruiz, because he probably is the next logical backup catcher. That's who I would think until I see Dodger fans on Twitter start saying they should re sign Martin for something like that. So um Martin makes sense. Yeah. I like Martin. He was also a good pitcher. And uh, <laughs> whenever there was some beef, he would be one of the first ones out of the dugout ready oh, to throw down. Dude, so, he's like a Brazilian jiu-jitsu up. dude. Like, he was ready sign to fight. He he trains in Brazilian jiu-jitsu. He was ready to go at all times. So I'm not screwing with Russell Martin because guys who get into jiu-jitsu are... They're in it for a reason. They know how to fight. They know what they're doing. It's all for yeah. self-defense, but I... I jiu-jitsu guys stress me out so um yeah but yeah no martin would be an interesting one just because again you don't know with kyber ruiz he hurt his finger i think it was his index finger with like a month left of season they don't know how he's going to return he might not even be ready to throw into a major league spot if something happens with barnes or smith whether they test positive get hurt who knows uh that might not be something the dodgers are ready to test and be like hey go yeah. if martin hasn't gotten any offers they could potentially i loved how martin was with the pitchers he was great i think that kind of is i think barnes is great too barnes just is younger oh, he's, he is. he's not much older than smith i think he's a good teacher but i feel like martin was a much better teacher with the catchers he was much more vocal he's a vet he's been around way longer than barnes has 
Uh, and he's yeah. it, defensively, Martin was really like pretty good. So I wouldn't yeah. mind having him along just to like, it, it sucks because that three man taxi squad, if you use Martin, then you can't bring Ruiz as well. But I would like Martin right. in there, even just talking to guys like Smith and Ruiz and they need him if they do. And if not, then obviously, but again, I wouldn't want to see Martin lose a spot on a, from a big league team just so he can sit in the Dodgers camp. So that's a start. Yeah. I, yeah. I do want to say one last thing. I am a fan of Austin Barnes. Uh, he does get a lot of crap because he's kind of like in that TK role. He plays every day. He, it's not going to be great, but if it's in short spurts, it can be good. As we've seen, like when, uh, Grandal was struggling. He'd come out in the playoffs and do his job. He's not great, but he's solid. Um, he's one of the tops at. Uh, I'm going to tell you right well. now, Grandal was not even solid in the playoffs. Dude had over a 50% strikeout rate. I'm just telling you right now. But go ahead. I, 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 I meant Barnes. Oh, okay. Barnes okay, sorry. Yeah, I'm, I'm still probably, annoyed I'm with Grandal saying, after. I'm so, yeah. sorry. Okay, keep I going. My bad. How <laughs> Barnes stepped in for Grandal and was solid. He wasn't great, oh, but he yeah. was solid. And two, especially I think Barnes in, is, a, is a fighter player, especially in short spurts. So Especially uh, in 2017. Whew, Barnes yeah. in that playoffs, the first and second round. He sucked in the World Series, but first and second round, he freaking killed it. He was one of the Dodgers' best players, I think, that first and you second round. You know what's round. crazy is I feel like a lot of people suck in the World Series, and if you look at how many runs each team scored, it was tied. Was it? Oh. Hmm. Yeah, they both scored 34 runs in that series. All I know is all the Dodgers suck in the playoffs besides Turner, Jock, and Muncie. That's Muncie. all I know. Yeah. That's about it. Those are the only three guys that have seemed to show up in the playoffs the last few years. So, um, yeah, let's hope that changes because we're never going to win. I will say Kershaw has shown up more than he did in the past. I will give him that. I think he has been much better these last few years. Uh, if you take out game five against the no, Red no, no, no. Sox in the World Series, I would say uh, the last two no, no. years have been pretty solid for him uh, in the playoffs. He shouldn't have been in game five of the uh, NLDS. Once he got out uh, out of Eaton, he shouldn't have returned out there. Yeah, that I part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That part, too, was bad. That was, I think, a mistake on Robert's end. Uh, but, yeah, minus that. And then if you take out game five of the 2018 World Series, I feel like Kershaw's done a great job at redeeming himself. I will no longer hold game four in 2017 of the World Series. I will no longer hold that against him. Uh, so that, to me, is just a complete scratch off the board of his postseason record. So uh, he's been pretty good. Actually, I take that back. Bueller has probably been the oh, probably the best player on our team come playoffs. Uh, but yeah, minus the Braves game, yeah, yeah, that was it. But that was one bad pitch. It was a grand slam. That was yeah. the only run he gave up. That or that was the only runs he gave up was off one. He settled in after that. Yeah, yeah. Afterwards, he's been uh. Oh boy, I love me some Walker Bueller in the playoffs. Yeah, I've I've come to the conclusion like I have a weird obsession with him, but it's in like a he's an asshole kind of way obsession, like as a baseball yeah. player kind of obsession. Like I think he'd be the kind of player that's like, you know what, you want to call me a dick? Yeah, you're right. I don't care, and I I respect him for it. I. I think there is truth behind pitchers have to be a little psychotic. Uh because if you look at guys like Rich Hill, Clayton Kershaw, Walker Bueller, the guys who have the guys who step up, Max Scherzer, uh, any of the guys who tend to step up in those moments or have well, a Max lot. Max Scherzer didn't really step up for this year. To be no, honest. no, no. But I even just in his regular season, like just in general, yeah, I feel like pitchers have to be a little kind of loose in the head, uh, because that's you're literally the entire game is in your hand, and it to some extent you feel like that way, and that's nobody touches the ball as much as you do beside your catcher. Like I, I just, I feel like you have to have a different kind of mental to go up there and be on the mound and be willing to shoulder all of that. Uh, right. So I, I, I love it about Bueller. He, I, if there's any, do not get me wrong. I love belly, but if there's any player on the Dodgers right now, uh, I'm not counting Mookie Betts cause I, he hasn't been on the team long enough. But like, if you look at our young guys who came up in the farm if there's one guy that I never want to see leave a Dodger uniform, it's going to be Bueller over Bellinger. Love Belly. He's an everyday MVP type player, but there is just something special about Bueller and a guy that can step up like that in the playoffs is so hard to find. Um, and it's nothing against Belly. I just think position players are easily replaceable compared to pitching. So 
That's just my thought on it. Uh, it I don't know about easily. You can easier. replace maybe like a Turner, but someone like Belly or Mookie Betts tough. Belly or Mookie Betts, though, you can replace with Trout, Betts, Yelich, Bellinger. Like all four of them can be interchangeable okay. and you almost have the same player. Okay. I'm no, yeah. Well, Trout's on his own level with everybody else. With well, yeah, Trout's on his own level. But... Maybe, maybe Acuna. Yeah, but despite his tendencies of being slow out of the box sometimes. Yeah, could be home runs that are long singles off the wall. A little too much of that, a little too much of let the kids play for Acuna. A little too much. <laughs> I like but it. I like the energy he plays with. Fantastic but... player. Yeah, he is, and he's still super young. Um, no, I don't want to oh, make it. Yeah, 20... 21, yeah, I think he's 23, but yeah, 22, 23, something like that. But yeah, no, I don't want to take away. I don't want to pretend like... Where can we find one of him? I yeah. want the Dodgers to find one of him. I know we can't go and easily replace Bellinger, but I just feel like finding someone like Bueller with his fire in the playoffs, that to me is harder to find than a position yeah. player who comes through in the playoffs. I guess that's how I should have worded it. Finding someone of no, Bueller's caliber. I agree. I, I agree. To that because extent. Because there are players like Marco Scudero who somehow do well in the playoffs for the Giants. Yeah. Are completely trash at hitting. But and then yeah, you have guys yeah. like Scherzer, Verlander, and Kershaw who are dominant as hell in the regular season but don't have the greatest postseason numbers. So, and then you have. Thank you for bringing up Verlander because I feel like people forget. No, they Verlander don't. Verlander, yeah, he is. He's I'm pretty sure he's like he's three, three times worse than Kershaw. He has, and he's like 0 6. I don't even know if he's thrown that many games in the World Series, but they've gone to Game 7 twice. So that may, yeah, he probably has thrown six games in the World Series because they've gone to Game 7 twice now. So, yeah, no, Verlander is not as good as anyone gives him credit for. He's literally a right-handed, harder-throwing version of regular season Kershaw, and Kershaw's better in the playoffs. So, um, yeah, nobody talks about that. Nobody talks about how Scherzer isn't that great either. Uh, Strasburg is a hell of a pitcher in the playoffs. Absolutely. Um, but yeah other than that we're already way over uh i don't oh, think yeah, fine, we don't we don't usually want to go this long but we're excited we haven't had actual baseball to talk about in a while so we kind of just let this one run out uh i did want to say really quickly bob nightingale posted the mlb odds with the from bet online today it had the dodgers and yankees tied for the most wins at 38 and a half so um and then astros coming in at third the second NL team would be the Braves down at 33 and a half and the Diamondbacks, the first NL West team to even challenge the Dodgers is seven games back. So things are looking pretty good for us. Uh, we've got arguably the best team in baseball. Only ones I would possibly put up there with us is the Yankees. I can no longer respect the Astros as a team until I see them play without cheating. So to me, they're just like every other team. Uh, but yeah. One quick thing, I saw a bunch of Yankee fans this morning saying Yankees over Dodgers in six games, book it. So uh, if that happens, I'll see you there. And I will gladly throw it in your face that you were wrong because the Dodgers absolutely kill Cole. So now what? Oh, you're not you talking. You're talking to Yankee fans, not me. You're talking to Yankee fans. Okay, yeah. I was like, the wait, Dodgers what did I say? Okay. Cole pretty well. And uh, I'm just going to throw it out there. If it happens to be in the World Series, I'll see you there, and I will gladly, gladly just sit here and watch the Dodgers win. I'm excited to see Garrett Cole's numbers not on a cheating team, too. That'll be interesting. He was always good with the Pirates. I'm not going to take that away from him. I think he's a great pitcher. He's average at best. Yeah, but I don't – like, he's a good pitcher. I'm not going to take that away from him, but I'm very interested yeah, to yeah. see how he is at a hitter's park. Uh, right. Yeah, so that'll be interesting. Uh, I, like, I, I see a lot of people saying Garrett Cole's the best pitcher in baseball. I can't say that because of the whole Astros thing. Well, the and, best pitcher in baseball is Jacob DeGrom. Yeah, I'm never saying and a pitcher is the right best. Now. Yeah, and no pitcher is ever the best pitcher in baseball off of one or two years of success. Sorry, it doesn't work that way. Right. Uh, you got to earn that. He's still not even better than Kershaw. Is a like maybe right now in this moment you could say, but arguably Kershaw could probably still go head to head with him to a to an extent when it comes to matching up uh stats per stats. I don't trust anything that comes out of the Astros numbers, so we'll see how that goes. Um other than that, very quickly, I just want to give a congratulations to the Dodgers as part of our positive podcast moments. The Dodgers won the 2020 ESPN 
Sports Humanitarian Team of the Year Award due to their work with the foundation. The Dodgers Dreamfield program has built 51 baseball and softball fields across LA, providing 338,000 youth with access to safe, playable fields. So shout out to the Dodgers for doing that. Glad that they are doing their part in uh, the community as they should. They have the money to. So take care of the community and keep giving us reasons to be proud. Um, I'm trying to do too much right now and I'm trying to write stuff down. So I'm going to stop rambling. That's all I've got to say. Do you have anything else to say? Uh, I don't have anything else to say. No. All right. Well, in that <laughs> case, we hope everyone enjoys the rest of their day, night, weekend, whenever you guys listen to this, don't forget to rate. If we deserve those five stars, give us those five stars. It means a lot. Leave us feedback, reviews. Don't forget, you can find all of our stuff at Dodger Yard, DodgerYard.com. And you can find me at Randy underscore Radcliffe. And you can find me at Michael Conan. And we will catch you guys next week, hopefully with the Dodgers first day in unofficial spring training and nothing, no more setbacks. And we are on our way to a good baseball season. So with that said, have a great day and we'll catch y'all next week. Bye guys. See you later guys.